Good afternoon, I'm Don Burgess for Burn News Live, and uh, today we have Bishop West of the Catholic Church and Joanne Wilmoth, who's the chair of the Peace and Social Justice Committee. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about um, the anti-racism uh, initiatives that they've started and are working through this year. So uh, welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Glad Good they had it. <laughs> yes. So. Um, Last month, you guys announced that you were going to start this uh, anti-racism initiative. Uh, why did you feel like this was important? Should I answer? Um, well, it was um, something that was started by the Peace and Social Justice Committee. We have done a number of different initiatives around um, peace and social or social justice issues in, in the Bermuda community. And we felt it was now time to tackle this big issue of race. And so I went to the bishop, and the bishop and I had a conversation about it. Uh, although he's new to Bermuda and new to the race <laughs> issues in Bermuda, I, we talked about it and I talked about how, whether it would be a good time for this to go forward. And the bishop, you can talk in terms of what you felt in <laughs> <laughs> on that. Well, as Joanne has already said, it was the topic that we, I believe we were thinking about not just last month, but even two years ago, when we were just trying the actions and initiatives of, uh, of the Peace and Social Justice Committee of our church. Uh, I am coming from Europe, I am coming from a country which is in 99,9% .9 white, huh? but uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's by the will of God that I was able to travel a bit and to live in different of my life outside of my homeland. So uh, that was a very good experience, uh, which actually exposed me to diversity, mm -hmm. variety of uh, religions, cultures, but also colors, mm -hmm. and uh, trying to settle in Bermudian society, I, even if I don't, wat don't watch much television, but however uh, I try to read and I try to keep my hand on the pulse, mm -hmm. it was uh, noticeable that the race topic is an issue. Mm -hmm. And we should not be afraid of dealing with even uh, issues which are like hot, hot potatoes. We, we have to be able to, to talk about, we, I believe it's this is the only way for us to grow and to bring uh, us to the point in which, as much as we can, we can help ourselves, our community, and hopefully also the entire community to overcome certain prejudices and simply to become a better place for everybody. What, what's sort of been the history of the Catholic Church in Bermuda as, as terms of race? I mean, I think a lot of people would consider that um, it's mainly a lot of Portuguese people or uh, as the historical background, but now a lot of Filipinos, uh, mainly because Catholicism's uh, the main religion in the Philippines. But, you know, how, do, how does the Catholic Church branch out from that? Well, the story of Catholic Church in Bermuda is quite interesting because, you know, Bermuda was discovered at the Bermuda, which is St. Peter's Church in St. George's, from 16. The belief of the even Christian denominations that were just developing here, they were actually doing their own way. The Catholic community has started in Bermuda only in the second half of 19th century. So it's 250 years after the discovery of this island. So uh, yes, and it's true. Uh, I believe that the Portuguese people coming here from Madeira, we are going to celebrate next year the, the great feast for the Portuguese people and the first wave of the Portuguese people coming to Bermuda. And then uh, also some Irish people. So they requested a kind of uh, spiritual assistance and this is how the, the Catholic community uh, has been born. And yes, we can say, well, 10% from are Portuguese and Portuguese descent. And majority of them I believe it's not only 
they are coming and they are staying and they would stay because maybe they are Bermudians by adoption or by, by the legal act, <laughs> but however, uh, some of them, they are Catholic as well. And yes, in this present time, for sure, the Filipino community is, uh, is a strong support for the Catholic believers, but also the, uh, the Sri Lankan or some Bangladeshi uh, community, they are also Catholic. Well, it's a, it's a very interesting issue because, you know, if you would see, it was um, some months ago in the parish of uh, St. Anthony's in the Warri, they organized an international dinner. Huh? And uh, the, the members of this community, they were asked to prepare a dish which would somehow reflect their tradition or culture or cuisine. And you know, there were 29 different dishes. So it, it gives you a, well, maybe, uh, well it, it gives us, I believe, a very clear understanding uh, how diverse and different the, the Catholic community in Bermuda mm -hmm. is, uh, and uh, I believe Bermuda generally is that way for many reasons. And uh, so that's that's a richness that uh, if we are able to, if we would be able to use it, I, I really, as I said, you know, I spent a good amount of my life uh, completely outside of my culture and of my of my homeland, and I learned very, very much from different cultures, religions, people, and that was that was absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I believe that the way I look at the world today is uh, together of things that I learned. Uh, well, from my homeland, obviously, but then what I learned just during my journey. And so this is why I, I believe that this the variety and diversity is, is an incredible source from which we can attain and just go forward. This is why, for example, this year we, we supported strongly also the initiative of the Filipino community to have their own festivity or festival of Santa Cruz and Flores de Mayo Santa Cruz. Cruz I believe it was a beautiful expression of their traditions, not just religious but cultural, and was important for these people somehow also to uh, not just to perform, but uh, just to be able to express themselves. So yes, it's 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 a beautiful place to experience that and to and to learn a lot. Now, what approximately is, is the black membership of the Catholic Church in Bermuda? It's not very large. Not very large. <laughs> it's not very large. And as I said, our church is mainly white. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, the Catholic Church is uh, very strongly connected, well, yeah, I should say mm -hmm. that, even if it's maybe going, going to be difficult to accept, but that's true. Uh, we, we became a part of the Western European culture, mm -hmm. and even if the Catholic Church is very strongly present in Africa, the situation is changing slowly. Like for many years, the hierarchy or the leadership of the local communities in various African countries was white. This thing is changing, it's changing fast, but there is a question to ask. Why is it changing? Is it changing because the Catholic Church becomes more and more able to give more responsibilities to not non white members or is changing because of the lack of vocations to priesthood and to episcopacy in the western world so we are somehow challenged by this situation and then we agree to find other solutions uh, i don't have a ready answer mm -hmm. I, I believe it's a mix of mix of things but uh, here in Bermuda, uh, this is what is very, very uh, obvious. Uh, if uh, you look at the congregations we have, they are mainly white. It's changing, but not because we are able to attract, uh, I, maybe it's not a good word, we are able to convince, I don't know, we are able to invite, because it's not that I want to get the people from other churches to become Catholic, I believe it's a, 
if they did not become in the history something happened that they did not become Catholic. But simply uh, not very many black people decided in the past to be Catholic. And the good number of those whom we have today, they are they just arrived to Bermuda from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. where the Catholic Church is much more black, simply. Mm -hmm. If you would go to certain islands like Trinidad, I have been to Trinidad, to St. Lucia, to Dominica, these islands, uh, the Catholic population is quite strong, and it's, it's mainly black mm -hmm. population of the Catholic Church. So here, yes, we are white church. If I can add to that, there's, yes, we don't have a lot of uh, black uh, people in as the people who are black in the Catholic Church, but uh, most people have come either have come up from the the Caribbean islands, or as the bishop said, or have married someone who is Catholic. Yeah. That's usually as has happened in terms of how we have blacks in the church, but the whole initiative around addressing racism uh, with regards to the Catholic Church, it doesn't matter whether the church is black mm -hmm. or the church is white. The, the racism problem is a, is, is a problem for the whole community and it's how do we as church begin to look at this issue and address this issue so that we can be a on the side of making, a, making Bermuda a better place and helping to eliminate the racism issue, as opposed to being, uh, being, um, being, a, being a part of the problem. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So, so when we look at the Catholic Church, where they pre pre appears to be predominantly white, or and have a few black members, it's not that we're saying, oh, let's go and get all black members no. in. <laughs> it's just that we just want to be open to what the teachings are of the Catholic Church, which to me, in terms of the social justice teaching, support uh, anti-racism and, and, and support our way of being in the world that helps us to, to embrace everyone from different uh, cultures and and um, and and um, races mm -hmm. as opposed to just one so we can see uh, just based on what you were saying then we can see like the Catholic Church going forward being more vocal about racism issues that are affecting our community I think that we will I think that uh, we are just right now trying to educate our community, our church community, in terms of what the real issues are, uh, trying to help our community understand where they sit in terms of things. Uh, and, and the more we become aware, the more then we can be more open and vocal. We as the Peace and Social Justice Committee are trying to move forward, but we know that this is a slow pro process, you know, and it's a process that we want to be uh, it, it to be cognizant, be, to be um, helpful and, and 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 work with regards to the whole church. So so constantly the things that we do as a committee, we go back to the bishop, mm -hmm. make sure that the, the the bishop is agree in agreement with it, make sure that the priests are in agreement with it, and not to say agreement agreement, but we we just want to make sure that we are moving forward together as church and then trying to work together how do we bring the whole community with regards to how the church can be a better source for good for this for yeah. this um, project yeah. and for this our, initiative. Our target is not that we want to bring all the black people mm -hmm. into our Catholic Church, that we want to somehow go after them to their communities <laughs> of faith and they are just going to tell them come and, and be with us. No, we, we, we simply respect the beliefs of others, but as Joanne said, we want to, we ourselves want to deepen our own awareness of the situation and then if we can contribute in anything to the experience of overcoming the problem of racism in our island, in our world, we would be happy to do that, simply. Now, Joanne, you mentioned the, the process that you guys are going through, and you've already completed that first step of meeting with the various parishes. How did that go this last month? 
it went very well. We uh, had about 70 people that came out. It was totally voluntary for uh, members of our different parishes, parish communities, to come and be a part of these workshops. And altogether, there were about 70 people that went through the process of raising their awareness around racism and raci racial justice. And, um, and, and it was not a short workshop. It was not a short <laughs> workshop. It's not, you know, because if it would be just <laughs> half hour or an hour, That's we right. would have much more, but it was right. serious. It was just a day that you had That's to right. dedicate. So right. with the busy schedules of our people, many of them still being engaged with the children, their children, uh, vari uh, various uh, sport and right. activities. Right. So, yes. you know, it's... Uh, from this perspective, the people really, really responded very nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were, we were very pleased with the response that we got and the, and the commitment that we got. And uh, the people that went through it very much want to go forward to what's next and, and how can we stay engaged. Mm -hmm. And more people are asking questions as well. So we're pleased. Good. So it was a full day workshop. So like, what were some of the topics and things that you discussed and covered during them? Mm -hmm. We uh, first we started off with the privilege walk, and we, we looked at the whole issue of white privilege, and um, and we did a privilege walk. And I don't know if you know about a privilege. I have, walk. No, I have no idea what okay. a privilege walk so is. So you, walk. Walk. you should you should make an experience <laughs> of it. So everybody starts at the same place. It starts at the beginning of the line, mm -hmm. and it, at that place everybody is equal. Okay. And then um, the facilitator will ask a number of different questions. And if um, and, and then ask you to either step forward or step back. And the, there's about 30 questions that are being asked. And at the end of it, you see people starting to separate around. And because we focus on white privilege, uh, they were separating around race. Okay. If we were to talk about something else. Uh, it was it was separated differently again. You know, if we were talk about economic privilege, it was separated differently again. But the topic was white privilege, so people were separated, and you saw the the, the lighter shade of people were moving mm -hmm. toward the front, and the uh, people who were darker were moving toward the back. And some people were even going way back into the sense of that had nothing to do with education, had nothing to do with anything other than. Uh, a number of set of questions and how people felt with regards to the response. If I can just say, it was really uh, a very touching and uh, I would say a powerful experience for many people uh, because uh, hearing to them afterwards, they were they were repeating that they just that was the moment in which many of them they realized the things that they were not aware about before, only when they just. Afterwards, at the end, they were just asked to, just to look around, you know, and they saw where uh, where they are in comparison with some other people. Uh, was was a very 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 powerful experience. So, my, what might be a question or two that, that you did during the privilege walk that would help illustrate white privilege? Um, if if you're white, step take one step forward. Okay. Okay. So, so a person like me would not move at all. <laughs> um, if um, oh gosh, okay. you're being being, uh, for example, white. Did did you did you face the situation in your life that the color of your skin conditioned your being employed or not? Well, yeah. there were something mm -hmm. yeah. like that. Exactly, things like that. Well, the reaction of the people, mm -hmm. for example, on your color. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that uh, just being in the in certain environment that the color of, of your skin was also affecting the way the people reacted to you? to you. Yes. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, that was. So, so that's the kind of, uh, that's, the, that's what happened in terms of the, the, the um, privilege walk. And then after that, we sat and debriefed. And that's where, as the bishop was saying, people were having a lot of very emotional responses, irrespective of what color you were. Right. The emotional responses came up around how that felt. And, um, and anyway, so we did that. And then after we did the, the privilege walk, we um, broke for, we had a break for lunch because that took two hours. That's a two hour uh, piece in order to execute. And uh, so, so we had broke for lunch after that. And then we came back and we saw a, we, uh, a, a slideshow presentation on social justice and, and, and religion. And uh, we, we saw the slideshow. 
and uh, then after that we did we broke out into into groups and and we discussed various things in terms of systemic because while the, the second half of the workshop the first half of the workshop we looked at individual privilege All right and then in the second half of the workshop we were looking at systemic privilege or, or systemic racism sorry and in, in, and in systemic racism we're looking at what what kinds of um, situations and organizations and and uh, are set up that uh, benefit one group of people and not another. Okay? And we saw a short uh, video on systemic racism and, uh, and then used that to join and get into the breakout groups to discuss it. So, so in that, um, in that um, piece we looked at systemic issues inside the church, mm -hmm. um, we, we looked at systemic issues uh, in, in the community as well you know, and, and, uh, and, and just put down those issues that we noted. So inside the church what sort of systemic issues are there? May I say one word here? Just one? Yes. <laughs> well last year uh, I've got the picture. It's a picture of the group of altar servers at this time altar boys of St. Anthony's Parish in Warwick. And there is a group of these boys who are serving the masses, our services, Catholic services, and there is about 15 of them. Only one of them is black. Ray Tanak, actually. Mm -hmm. This is his picture when he was a boy. Mm. So, you know, here we have MSA school. And in the history of this school, there was a moment in which the sisters who were uh, responsible for the school, they wanted to open also education for the black community and they were not allowed. Not just by the instrument of the hierarchy of the church, but generally right. by, the, by the social unacceptance to such a, such a, such a move. So, uh, well, that's the history of the school. They, they wanted, but they were not allowed. So, talking about systemic, so the church in itself, maybe in the white areas, was facing these realities, but at times had also to succumb to certain social conditions and maybe did not fight enough against this injustice that was happening. You know, which, 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 which often happens and people don't realize that with regards to systemic issues. You know, people just go along with what the status quo is mm -hmm. and, uh, as, and as a result uh, things happen that we later then regret. And um, so, so when we when we can look at and and, and examine what is happening systemically in our environment and in our community, then we can then begin to say, that how can we do differently to make this different? And for instance, if you look at the prison system, okay, how many people are in the prison system and, and how many of them are black and how many of them are white? Now, I know in Bermuda it, it might be different because we have 70%, 65 or 70% black. Uh, in, in Bermuda, so it might be different. But when you look at the U.S., for instance, you know, and, 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 and they talk about how many people are in the in the prison system, most of them are black. But but they but in in in, in reality, there are only I think about 13 percent black persons in the U.S. Do you know what I mean? Right. So how do we get so many black people in the prison system? So it's those kinds of things that you would examine and look at and say, how do we get here? And what kinds of policies that were put in place that may have perpetuated that? And how do we, can we go about changing that? In, in people? And that's, and that's the, the systemic issues that we would look at. I think one of the things that you just said was, you know, people go along with the status quo. Mm -hmm. How do you help people find their voice and being able to speak up and speak up for justice? So first of all, you have to uh, raise awareness. You know, first of all, you have to uh, not be silent. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you have to talk. You have to open your mouth and 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 begin to say that that silence is not acceptable around this issue. So then we begin to to talk about it, which is what we're doing first and foremost in the Catholic Church. We're saying we understand that the issue is here. We we know that it's it's not good enough any longer to be silent about it. And so we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about it amongst our church community. 
um, and that then from there, then we, once we talk about it, then we can raise awareness, and once we raise awareness, then we can begin to begin to chip away at what we can do and, and, and how we can do it. Now, I know you guys were going ahead and, and planning this, but then you had the fortunate situation of uh, Dr. John Leake from the Archdiocese yes. of Washington show right. up who's in charge of their mm -hmm. anti-racism uh, initiatives. How did um, any advice that he gave you or any anything that he said help illustrate going the way forward or, or, or was everything just set? No, we, just, we had a, just a wonderful conversation about what they were doing and what we're going to be doing. And uh, in fact, he is a friend of someone that was here in Bermuda that did the um, the diversity training review, so that's how I connected to him. And um, as a result of that, he's still available, it's still mm -hmm. out there for whatever and whenever I need yeah. advice around going forward. But the interesting thing is with regards to John Leake is that they're starting the same uh, anti-racism initiative in the U.S. and know that the need for it is, is, is important in terms of the Catholic Church in the U.S. and in terms of the uh, United States um, Conference of um, American Bishops. They, they understand the need for to raise this issue and to move this issue forward in the U.S. with all the unsettling um, concerns that are coming up around otherness uh, with, with regards to race mm -hmm. or with regards to culture uh, but any agenda or anything yeah. in terms of other people being mm -hmm. different. And so they're, they're, they're beginning to address it. Um, and we were starting to address it here, not connected mm -hmm. to them, but it's nice to know that we are simultaneously going together. So we feel um, grateful that we, have, we are moving on to this right now, and that's, it's quite appropriate. Okay. Yeah, it was really nice to meet this, this gentleman because his positivity was almost infectious, I would mm -hmm. say, the mm -hmm. contagious, you know, mm -hmm. it was great. And uh, he was also able to share some of his uh, concerns or some of his difficulties that he is facing, not only in the white part of the community, but also in the black part of community. Mm -hmm. That was quite interesting. It was because he's also strongly involved in his own parish, which is a black parish, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> actually exactly. in Washington, yeah. D.C., yeah. with some white elements mm -hmm. in the middle of them. He shared some of very interesting insights about just the American black Catholic and the uh, wife of migration of the black persons and black Catholics from Africa. They are coming right this, this year to, to America mm -hmm. and the difference in approach to certain issues. Well, it's, it was really, really interesting uh, meeting. This is why I'm saying meeting people, it's always an enriching experience. Because <laughs> yeah, you get exposed to different viewpoints yeah. and people don't always see things the way that you see them. Well, yeah, most yeah. of the time people don't see things and, the way And that you know, it's obviously, well, as, as John mentioned, we are talking more or less about the same issues, but our perspective in our island, which is beautiful, but it's very small, is one thing. And the perspective, which seems to touch the same issues, but being presented or being uh, being looked from the reality of a big country like United States is, is a bit different somehow. So being able to make a little comparison, not just but something like it's it's simply helpful. Yeah. Now you you had your workshops. Your, your second major part of this initiative is uh, an event that's happening in September. What? So tell us a little bit about what's going to happen in September. In September, we're going to be looking at this, uh, si the second part, which is systemic racism. So we have um, different experts in the community, and I can't tell you who all the names because I still am solidifying the people who are going to be a part of that. But uh, we have a number of people who are expert in their field, either with regards to understanding the, and we're looking at two systemic issues, which is one around education, and the other one is around employment. Um, and so we're getting uh, experts in that area and that also someone else that can give some information with regards to statistics. And, um, and so we're going to bring them in the room again doing um, a workshop, which is usually a, a workshop, so usually three hours and a, on a Friday evening. And this particular workshop is already set for September the 14th on a Friday evening. And, uh, and we'll have the panel speakers talk about systemic is racism issues either in employment or in in um, education 
and then we'll open it up to the up to the public to ask questions about that and then they will answer the questions because they know more about this uh, than, than we do and um, so once we address that and that's open to the whole public that's not, not only open to the Catholic community it's open to all, all of Bermuda to attend and um, so that will be our second piece so that we can get some understanding of what systemic issues are out there in our Bermuda community particularly around these two big pieces education and, um, and employment and, and when we did our, our initial workshop with everyone, a lot of people raise those issues. Mm -hmm. Education and employment are the problem, but they don't understand it in the context of it being a, a systemic racism issue. So, so it should give us a lot more uh, in, in our awareness around that. How much did people really voice their concerns about the education and, and the employment issues? Oh, there were a lot. We've got, I've got all the raw data, <laughs> which I've got to still share with Bishop uh, with, uh, from our workshops. And there were a lot of issues that uh, people were saying, well, this is a education issue. It's not a racism issue. But then when you look at it in terms of the whole system that's been in place, you can see that it actually is both. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, 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 a, it's an education issue, but in the context of race. Will that be held here at the church hall? This or will be held here at the church hall. Okay. Yeah. Now you're having a third event in November. We'll have a third event in November. And you have two speakers. That's right. Yeah, we have two international speakers coming down. Uh, one of them is Father uh, Brian Massingale, mm -hmm. and he is a, a professor at uh, Fordham University. He has written a book on um, racism and racial justice in the Catholic Church, and has he does a lot of speaking with in, uh, around racial justice and racism issues in the, in the U.S. Um, so he's going to come and talk to us about that and also he's going to bring the particular perspective around the Catholic Church which is important for us because as Catholics this is what we need to know and need to understand. Um, and so he'll bring that piece with when he comes and then we have someone else who was here uh, some years ago who did the diversity of a training at the Bermuda College. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of the consultants that came down from the National Tr uh, Training Laboratory. And so he will be here and he will speak with regards to um, racial justice um, in, in, with regards to science. So mm -hmm. he's going to look at it at the micro level and going to look at it how we understand relationships how do we work with one another individually, and how do, in this at this micro level, even uh, issues of race come in? Because we know that people start to understand about race very early in life. Um, it's not when you get 10 or 12 years old. No, it starts very much in the beginning when we come into the family and you're taught certain things. So he will help us to begin to look at this, that micro uh, looking at the, at the issues around race. And who's that event open to? That event is open to everyone. It's going to be at the um, MSA um, auditorium. auditorium yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Is there something that you would, uh, I didn't ask you, that maybe that you feel strongly about that you want to get out to the public? Just that everyone come out. That just <laughs> that uh, it, it is, it's not for, only for Catholics, it's for everyone in Bermuda. And we hope that this discussion is going to be something that all of the Bermuda community can begin to have and certainly all of the churches can begin to have knowing that this whole concept of racism and how the church deals with it and how do we as church begin to move forward and being a positive uh, support for attacking and addressing these racial uh, issues in Bermuda is uh, it, it will be beneficial if we could come together around that and the bishop's going to work with that and that he's going to invite uh, the various church communities to yes. attend. Well, uh, yeah. yes, well, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I believe that it's important that we would not just uh, get stuck with the issue itself in the sense that there is racism and we can't move ahead. We can just sit we can state that, we can look for the guilty, <laughs> but it's not going to solve anything. Mm -hmm. This is why we, we, as much as we can, we are a small community, 
Catholic Church is not a big community. But uh, as much as we can, we really want to be able to move forward in, in the little one, in, in the little that we can, but, but we want, uh, hoping that it's going to bring the awareness, because I really believe that awareness of things can help us to think with this mind of diversity and variety. That's the world in which we are living, and we do not have to like it, but that's the world we are living in, which is going to become more and more colorful. Okay. I'm Don Burgess with Burr News, and I was uh, lucky today to be with Bishop West of the Catholic Church and Thank Joanne Wolmut, who is the chair of the Peace and Social Justice Committee, and we appreciate you tuning in and listening to us today. Thank you, and Thank have you a beautiful afternoon. Absolutely. Absolutely.